Hello, hello. I'm Linda White, and I'd like to welcome you to Shakuri's Time Capsule, a mini-podcast covering all sorts of pop culture topics from yesteryear. Now, how many of you out there are old enough to remember watching television back in the mid to late 20th century? Back when TV sets were huge, cumbersome things full of tubes and all sorts of gizmos. And it wasn't uncommon for a TV to take a minute or so to warm up and come to life. Black and white TVs were commonplace in the 50s and early 60s before giving way to color. And that was when the NBC Peacock logo really started strutting its stuff. I can still remember those promos. Of course, this was back before cable and digital television, So your reception was something that usually had to be adjusted each time you turned on your set. This was before remote controls were widely available, so TVs had all kinds of dials and buttons on them, which meant that we actually had to get up each time we had to change the channel or adjust volume. Sometimes the picture would start flipping upwards, so you'd have to twist the vertical hold dial until it steadied, or even worse, You had static or snowy picture, which meant turning your TV antenna, which was either on top of your set or, as in our case, it was a tall steel rod outside the house. No, the picture's still fuzzy. Keep turning. Oh, wait. Stop. Stop. That's perfect. Shouts like these through our kitchen window were commonplace in the mid-1970s when just about every house in the neighborhood had a 20-foot aerial antenna outside. Whenever a storm or windy weather blew our antenna the wrong way, somebody in our family would have to go outside and manually turn the aerial pole until the static on our TV screen gave way to clear images of the Fonz or the Love Boat Gang. Before we would later discover the wonders of cable TV, there were only three main network TV channels available here in Central Florida, along with the UHF station and a local PBS station. As we only had one TV set in my youth, television viewing was a family affair. Sitcoms and variety shows were favorites in our house, so we spent many evenings laughing. Sometimes as a special treat, my mom would heat up some Jiffy Pop popcorn. My siblings and I were always amazed and amused when the foil dome would slowly expand as the corn kernels exploded within. (laughs) What can I say? We were easily amused back then. The popping would eventually stop as the aroma of freshly buttered popcorn permeated the house. Later on at the end of the night, the TV stations would sign off because there were very few 24-hour channels back then. Some of the stations might even play the Star Spangled Banner before going to a test pattern. Then it was time to turn off the TV set, and the picture would shrink down, down, down to a tiny white dot in the middle of the screen before disappearing entirely. Of course, TV viewing changed rapidly over the ensuing decades with the advent of cable, VCRs, DVDs, DVRs, on-demand, and streaming services. Today, we are very fortunate to live in an age where we can watch pretty much anything, almost any time, and anywhere we wish. Best of all, we can binge watch our favorite shows, commercial-free in most cases. No more waiting an entire week for the next episode of our favorite show. But despite the convenience and abundance of modern TV viewing choices, I sometimes look back on those nights from decades past when we all sat around the large bulky color TV set in our family room, manually changing the channels or adjusting that vertical hold. Television was definitely a more fun communal experience then. Well, at least until a storm or windy weather would once again blow our antenna the wrong way, sending one of us outside to turn that aerial pole. This podcast has been brought to you by my books, which are all available on Amazon. Yellow Gal, Queen of the Montclair, and The Bell of Camden County are both historical fiction novels set in the Old South during the late 19th and early 20th centuries. And for dog lovers young and old out there, there's A Home for Scoot, a heartwarming tale of a pup in search of a home of his very own.
Again, all these books were written by me, Linda White, and are available on Amazon in both paperback and digital formats. As always, I'd like to thank each and every one of you for taking the time to listen, and I wish you all the very, very best that life has to offer. Adios. Adios.